Dooley Noted, 4 2016 Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here at Immaculate Dissection <laughs> uh, in London, Level 1 4 Concepts with the amazing Amy. Please introduce yourself to the camera. Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I work in Brighton at a place called Brighton Body Works. And um, um, day one, uh, day two, having a fantastic time. Oh my gosh. And we found something very cool with you today on your supine breathing assessment. So here in ID, first comes first, we always want to build intra-abdominal pressure. And on Amy, she's a little strong girl, your therapist, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And so you spend all day teaching people how to be strong and how to rehabilitate themselves. But the first proponent of that is intra-abdominal pressure, building core strength, core building. And a lot of people have a, a misconception of what core strength actually means. We know we need to load something in order to explode it. And we found a couple of things on here. What did we find on you? Do you remember? Um, so I have um, a, an aortic pulse. Mm -hmm. And Very I have visible. trouble um, with lateral expansion of my breathing. Mm -hmm. A little bit of left rib flare as well we saw. Yeah, um, ongoing um, L4, L5 right hip Okay, um, my hip will usually jam itself in its sockets for these anatomical connections we talk about for the map of the dissection. So the first things first, in order to decompress the hip and give your back some stability, we have to teach you how to properly build intra-abdominal pressure with breathing, yeah? So we'll put her in supine 90 90s, we're gonna put her on her back, and we put your heels up on here. And if you come in close, I'm gonna lift this up, is that okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay. And what we notice is that Amy sits in hyperextension of the low back, putting a lot of load, especially into this right hip, and that she has uh, quite a bit of a rib flare. And so what we did with her was we uh, did an ID correction on trying to be able to decrease the rib flare. You can actually see quite a bounding aortic pulse there. And we expect to see some aortic pulse, but not this much of a bounding. On thin people, you will see a little bit more. So what we did is we put her into this supine position. We had her only letting the heels touch and making sure that we can get her into a little bit more of a pelvic neutral position. I'm bringing her ribs down first, neck long, chin tucked, chest wide, ribs down. We were gonna just see if we could cure. She still wants to raise up apically beforehand. A lot of people lose this lower abdominal pressure and that can lead to pelvic floor dysfunction, which can then lead to hip compression since the hip muscles like obturator and turn as its fascia attaches to the pelvic floor. So we need to restore your ability to be able to build pressure down here. And we notice on breathing, if she just takes a big inhale into my hands. Very little fill down low and quite a bit of a stutter on this side. As we go to the lateral fill, not a lot of movement on this side here. So we're gonna stand her up and we put her through the macular dissection pendulum stretch for the external abdominal oblique because she's really stuck at rib five where EAO starts. If we put her right leg back, and I find her rib five, which I find by xiphoid coming around. And I'm gonna put her into right lateral flexion. I'm gonna put her into flexion. I'm gonna put her into contralateral rotation. I'm gonna have her take a big inhale and exhale. And I'm gonna have her lean back in the knee, IV style. Good. And since she has a little bit more tension coming back down, go ahead. On rib seven and eight, I know that's more of a TVA, so I'm gonna start her in hips lateral rotation. Flexion, good. And now come back and around. And I'm gonna have her lean back in the knee. Good. And I have come back to the laying down position. We learn these pendulum stretches out of macular dissection with the proper cueing patterns. And then when you have her return back to this position, I see she her rib flare has decreased already, but I'm gonna do what you see in the duly noted videos, the coffin flick. I'm gonna have her turn her head to the right. Take a deep breath in. Exhale all the way. Good. And cough. Good, back to center. And then I have her breathe for me again, right into here. Much better fill on the lower aspect and then exhale. You can see she's actually sitting down a lot uh, more flat on the ground. She's still maintaining lordosis, but she doesn't have that hyper lordosis. I'm gonna check her lateral fill, which is slowly improving. Feels a lot different, I bet, too, yeah? Yeah, it does. So if you just focus on hip decompression in a hip that's compressed, Amy, it's never gonna feel better because your hip may be staying compressed because of these anatomic connections we talk about in the macular dissection. So one of the biggest focuses for you is to learn this anatomy, learn how the anatomy affects the hip, and then you can have permission to decompress your hip. But that was a really good improvement. A couple of quick corrections that you can learn in ID. If you're wondering where immaculate dissection is near you, 
The website's easy to get to, www.immaculatedissection.com. And we are more than happy to teach you how to build proper IAP so that you have permission to decompress the hip. Amy, are you taking this home with you tomorrow? Oh, fantastic. My client's getting this next week. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> ID for life. ID builds you IAP. And uh, <laughs> hopefully you can take some of the things that you learn at, at the seminar and, and put them into good work tomorrow. I'm thinking that you will. And if you can do it yourself, you can teach someone else how to do it. But until then, you can't. So she learned how to do it on herself, baby. Uh, Dr. Kathy Dooley, we'll see you next time.